Good afternoon, First Lutheran uh, members and friends and uh, uh, partners in our community. Uh, welcome to this midweek time of prayer and reflection. Pastor Brian here, and it's a uh, sunny day. The sun had broken through the clouds. It was cloudy this morning, and uh, summer has returned. It feels like a bit, but uh, fall has arrived. Labor Day marks the end of summer, uh, but also the cooler nights uh, is an indicator of that as well. And uh, it, it's, it's a time of transition. This coming Sunday, uh, Sunday, uh, September 12th, would normally be a time of rally day, a time for uh, churches traditionally would have a kickoff for their fall ministries, whether it be choirs and Sunday schools. Uh, we have made the move at First Lutheran to go back to live Zoom worship and, and not gather for in-person worship gatherings because of uh, the increased spread, not just in our community, but also within our faith community as well, uh, itself of uh, maybe not a lot of uh, infections, but exposures to those who have been infected. So uh, the people in our faith community are teachers and students and uh, working. And so uh, there's just more more opportunities for people to catch the virus. So we're not gathering together. So that means we're not kicking off a Sunday school. We're not kicking off a choir music ministry uh, this coming Sunday. Instead, we'll be on that familiar live Zoom. Uh, we'll be back together in that format uh, much as we were last Sunday uh, with intern Tyler, who led worship on Labor Day Sunday. Uh, and we'll see how things go. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like this Delta variant is regionally popping up, and, and uh, it, it might be some time. Uh, but we'll take it week by week and, and see where the patterns are. Uh, what does that mean? It, it can be discouraging. I have to admit that I'm discouraged that uh, we we thought we'd be getting back together in person, wherever that might be, and uh ministry might be together rather than apart like we are right now. Uh, so that can be discouraging and not just for me as but but for people of our faith community who want to get together but also in our whole lives in general, our ability to safely be together uh, it, it, it's frustrating that this lingers on. So uh, continue to pray for one another, uh, encourage one another, uh, encourage people to get vaccinated. Uh, the message is, is that if you're in the hospital and you have COVID, uh, there's a good chance that's because you know, you're not you're not vaccinated. So vaccinations do work. I'm going to say that, and I uh, can't imagine how that's political, but somehow it is. Uh, get vaccinated uh, for your own sake and for mine as well. I'll be selfish that way. <laughs> uh, I'm not at all interested in getting a uh, breakthrough case as someone who's vaccinated. Uh, uh, out of consideration for your neighbor, uh, we, we take these steps and precautions. <sighs> things in my mind uh, about ministry. Uh, recently, I read census data that was released on 2020, and specifically our, our neighborhood context where First Lutheran is located. Uh, and that's specific to where our ministry is and our mission is downtown Cincinnati, not just over the Rhine, but from 2010 to 2020, the change in our neighborhood was significant. Uh, the neighborhood that many people have in their mind's eye looks a great deal now on paper, different on paper, if you didn't notice on the sidewalks. Uh, but in 2010, uh, the number was about 75% of the people in the neighborhood are African American. In 2020, that number has dropped to 43%. Uh, and the white uh, demographic was about 25% in 2010 and now 47%. Uh, so the neighborhood looks different in this one short decade. There's also 400 fewer residents in the neighborhood. So there's fewer people living in our neighborhood as well. Uh, you'd think it'd be growing like uh, gangbusters because of the number of uh, units being developed, whatnot. But redevelopment doesn't mean higher density living. It means uh, single family units that were multifamily units. Uh, also, a lot of redevelopment going on where places are still under construction. Uh, that hasn't stopped during the pandemic. So once the pandemic lifts, if it ever does, then people will move back in downtown perhaps. But we don't know. That's an impact, though, as I think about ministry, uh, as we think beyond the pandemic, when we can get back together, we will look different. The first Lutheran of 2021 or 2022, will, we know it looks different before going to the pandemic, but especially coming out of the pandemic, 2022 ministry will look a significantly great deal different, more different than 2010. Uh, imagine the neighborhood it just in the racial demographic change there, but also comes socioeconomic change there. And it's not something that we fostered or, or desired to see an outcome, but it is a reality. Uh, and, and so what does that mean for us as we come out of the pandemic? 
Uh, we're a group of people who have the ability to get on Zoom and Facebook Live. And, and so our faith community has been active, yes, and connected, but through virtual uh, media and technology. And that means uh, we're a group of people who have the means and resources to do that. Uh, that says something about what our faith community will look like when we come back together. Uh, there's that aspect, and then also the change in the neighborhood. So First Lutheran uh, also will be older. Uh, I, the thought there is that it's kind of unjust that we're going to be older because we haven't seen each other in a while, but it, that's true, though, is, is, is by the time we get back together, it could be two years. And I know just having been down at the church uh, these many months in and out to check on things, climbing the stairs, uh, I do it a little bit slower not as fast. My knees are getting older from all the running that the doctors warned me about, but I keep on doing it anyway. Uh, so when you come back to First Lutheran Building, you might in your mind think, I used to run up and down these stairs and uh, events were great. And I always wanted to go get the ice out of the basement. But now you might say, isn't there someone else that can get that ice out of the basement? We are changing not only in the way we look, but in the way we have aged. A great deal of change. What will First Lutheran look like as a ministry in 2022 uh, is a question I've been pondering and thinking. And in some of these questions, we don't need to get too far ahead on ourselves uh, because I think we best ask and answer those questions when we're together in person, having those conversations. But it's helpful though to imagine now some of these details and facts and realities so that they're all not new facts and details and realities when we do get back together. So prayer for First Lutheran and Ministry. In the meantime, in the fall, we're gonna keep on doing what we've been doing. We're going to gather together this way. We're going to gather together via Zoom. We're going to offer online opportunities together in small gatherings of people, maybe outside and wherever that might be, just to make sure we can support one another and stay connected and continue to proclaim the gospel of Christ uh, in the unique way that First Lutheran does as we share the love of God. Uh, so with that now, I'd like to transition into uh, a time of prayer. Uh, and we lift up uh, those who are... Uh, in need of prayer and healing. I think of uh, uh, Susie, uh, Nick and Jerry, uh, Jim, Sandy, Pat, and others who we know who are in need of healing, that you know, but also we pray for those who are living in anxiety uh, day to day because of their work or school situation. Uh, those who do not have a choice but to go into uh, places where COVID is likely being spread about and worried about bringing that home to their families, or maybe to older parents or people who are compromised in their health. Uh, so we pray for those people and those who work in those environments. Uh, we also pray for uh, our communities that are recovering from the uh, Hurricane Ida and the storms that went up to the Northeast uh, and the devastation they brought. Uh, we lift that up as well. So with that, I invite you to pray with me. Uh, the Lord be with you. Gracious God, we gather here in this patio, my backyard on this sunny day in September. Uh, we give you thanks for uh, the rhythms of creation, uh, the changing of the seasons. Uh, it marks different seasons of our life as well. As we are together but yet separate, uh, we long to be together physically, but we appreciate the blessing of technology that brings us together in new and unique ways. Uh, continue to bless the work of our digital ministers, uh, those who proclaim the gospel through the medium of technology. Uh, we ask that you would be with those who live in these anxious times and anxiety or fear of contracting the virus, uh, those who have to work in hospitals or schools or the workplace where they might be exposed to the Delta variant. Watch over and protect uh, all people. Encourage us to live with our neighbor in mind, that we might care for our neighbor through vaccinations and wearing masks and washing hands, the things that we've been told to do for so long. Uh, may we not grow weary of those practices, but yet may we be uh, consistent and diligent in maintaining those good practices. We ask that you um, heal those who are in need of physical healing or mental healing, uh, those who suffer uh, in any way. We lift up Susie and Nick and Sherry and Pat and Jim and Sandy and others who we name silently in our hearts that you know that are in our hearts at this time. We pray for those who suffer in any way, whether it be through the stress of loss of employment, uh, those who are facing eviction, those who do not have housing, uh, those who do not have enough food to eat or health care, 
those who are under the stress of uh, economic uh, uh, debt and concerns for how to provide for themselves and their families. Uh, provide for those in need and show us ways to help those who are in need. We continue to pray for those who are have been displaced, the refugees of Afghanistan, our military uh, service members who uh, have looked back on 20 years in Afghanistan and try to find uh, meaning and significance in that, uh, that is filled with hope uh, and purpose. Uh, thank you for the service of whether it be government officials or our military, uh, those in nonprofits and international organizations working to bring about transition in a safe manner uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, provide new homes for those who are being relocated wherever that might be in the world. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. Uh, we long to be together. Until then, we trust that you unite us together in worship and word, watching over us and sustaining us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Uh, I look forward to uh, being with you in worship on Sunday, uh, Sunday, uh, September 12th, 11 a.m., live Zoom worship. It's a communion Sunday, uh, so bring bread, wine, juice crackers so we can celebrate that sacrament together. Go in peace and share the love of God. Thanks be to God.